Good evening. This is the KHON2 News at 6. An explosive eruption this morning at Kilauea Summit, and although short lived, it did generate an ash plume as high as 30,000 feet. The cloud drifted northeast, bringing light ash fall to the areas immediately around the Kilauea Summit. We have several reports tonight. Jen Boniza talks about the impacts today's explosion and ash fall has had on the community. We begin with Marissa Yamani, who joins us with the latest and talks about what happens next. Marissa? Hi, Joe, from a very boggy Hilo. The explosion this morning may be the first in a series of explosions. The one this morning was huge, as high as some airplanes fly. But the good news no one was injured. It happened while most people were still asleep at 417 this morning, the biggest explosion so far over the past two weeks. Ash and steam as high as 30,000 feet. Fortunately, it was, it was short lived, so that kind of uh, went down pretty quick and then um, didn't have really a wide impact. And like Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory has been saying, it's been fine stuff that's been going into the communities, but you know, any, any bigger. Uh, debris sounds like it's probably within the park, which is close. There's been talk of the so-called big one happening. According to scientists at the USGS Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory, there's not going to be just one big one, but more like a series of steam-driven explosions that are bigger than anything we've seen in the past 10 years. The one this morning was certainly one of the big ones. These uh, explosive, uh, at least based on the 1924 experience, <coughs> the explosions are, it's a series of explosions. They don't build up to a biggest one. Um, they vary in strength throughout the period. Explosive steam eruptions happen when the lava lake drops below the water table. The water comes into contact with the magma and the water turns into steam. And when the rocks from the crater wall fall down, blocking the opening, you have all that steam buildup and it eventually erupts, sending steam, ash, and some rocks along with it. But the evidence uh, is difficult to come by at this point. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it's like we could go, we can't quite go into the crater and well and gra gather the evidence. It becomes dangerous to do so, so we, we're kind of waiting for the right time to get that evidence. During the steam-driven explosions back in 1924, that series lasted for two and a half weeks. They sort of die off the, um, over the last, the last few days of 1924. The explosions sort of died. The seismicity dropped off. What we've been seeing over the past week, though, and what we witnessed starting last week, Wednesday, coming out of Hale Mau Mau Crater, that was a gas explosion. Today, scientists believe it was a steam explosion, much more powerful. And that's why Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is closed. As you know, the, um, the event uh, early this morning was a little different. You know, we had anticipated that, that and we had prepared um, for the event. Uh, it was relatively short-lived, as you know, but clearly the ash and the fallout is still with us. Yesterday, USGS scientists found rocks that measured two feet across in the parking lot, a few hundred yards from Hale Mau Mau Crater. Have a bit of evidence uh, in the ash fall that came out this morning. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've gathered a number of samples from ash in different places. Uh, and by the way, the ash fall was mitigated by rain, so the rain kind of uh, didn't allow the ash to go very far. We can't go into the caldera, <laughs> it's too dangerous at this point to see what else is out there because the larger pieces will only fall right around Hollywood Mountain Crater. And that's why it's so important that people do not sneak into the park. Even the scientists, as well as the rangers, they're working off site because it's that dangerous. So if history repeats itself, we could see another two weeks or so of steam driven explosions. Reporting live from Hilo, Marissa Yamane, KHO2 News, back to you, Joe. Thanks, Marissa. Meanwhile, residents are dealing with the fallout of the steam explosion as well as the ash. Jen Boniza joins us now with more on that. Jen? Here on Highway 11, around mile marker 27, just down the street from the entrance to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And one of the biggest concerns from officials, they say, from that explosion today, is the ash fall. Let me step out of the way for a second here. Now, in the distance of Highway 11, you can see this sort of haze hanging in the air. Now, that, of course, 
partly due to some of that asphalt. We drove from Hilo to Pahala today. That's about 50 miles away. And once you get south of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, you can definitely tell a difference in the air quality. It is much thicker there, and it is much more difficult to breathe. What goes up must come down. The volcanic ash that shot 30,000 feet above Hale Maumau early this morning is doing exactly that. Residents were warned to shelter in place. I met with Jessica Farrakhan from the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. If you walk around and you notice the top of fence posts and signs, there's a thin dusting of ash. You may not see it, but other areas are feeling a difference. Mary Evangelista lives in Pahala, more than 20 miles south of the volcano. Well, because there are times that I have a hard time breathing, runny nose, <laughs> and my eyes burn. Yeah. Affected residents got the help they needed. 3M donated 18,000 N95 masks, being passed out in Volcano, Pahala, Naalehu, and Keaau. There is a correct way to wear the N95 mask. First, cup it over your face, grab the straps. Pull them over your head. Make sure that the top strap goes over your ears and the bottom around your neck. And then you take that and you squeeze it so that it's tight around your nose. So that it keeps out all of the particulate matter. But remember, these N95 masks do not protect you against toxic gases. Well, I'm worried. That's why I'm here for a mess. I think that there's a high level of anxiety because none of us really know what's going to happen. The air quality has been pretty bad in this area, so we want um, people to be prepared. The N95 masks really do help. Um, my cameraman and I, when we were down in Pahala, we put those on, and it definitely made a difference. If residents still want to get a free N95 mask, the distribution centers will remain open until 7 p.m. tonight. For a list of those four locations, you can look on our website, KH12.com. Live from the Big Island, I'm Jen Boniza with KH12 News. Back to the studio. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jen. Ashfall is still possible from Kilauea Volcano and as well as hazardous air quality and as occasional small bursts of volcanic ash may emanate from Halema'uma'u Crater. The good news is that all of that fog and all of that ash today, that should be clearing. Now, trades return to most of the state today. I did check specifically for Hilo Airport, and they're still seeing a bit of a southwesterly wind flow, and that's bringing up some of that fog into Hilo. But as the night progresses and through tomorrow, we should see stronger trade winds moving into the Big Island and pushing that fog plume away and to the southeast of the islands. And the good news is once the trades return, they're forecast to stick around for at least another week or so. Let's take a look at some of the earthquakes. We have still two distinct swarms, one in the lower east rift zone and the other near the volcano area, the Kilauea area. The biggest earthquake today, magnitude 3.6 in the east rift zone. Joe, back to you. Thanks, Joss. The Pahoa Post Office had to close today because of the latest eruption. Pahoa High and Intermediate and Pahoa Elementary School were also closed because of high sulfur dioxide levels, along with four charter schools. Operations are normal at Hilo and Kona airports. In Leilani Estates, photos from the U.S. Geological Survey show the cracks on the road have expanded significantly over the past day. Officials say these cracks are caused by the underlying intrusion of magma into the lower east rift zone. And fissure 21 just opened, while spattering continues from several other fissures. Stay with KHON2 on air and online as we continue to track this volcanic emergency. We'll bring you the latest information.